What's up, everybody? This is Neil Real, and this is Let's Please God, the ministry that helps you get right with God. Today, we're on episode 70. We're talking about the validity of Paul's apostleship. And I just want to combat people who are saying Paul's the Antichrist, Paul's writings are not valid, and also that you can't understand Paul's writings. The root of this is because they don't like what Paul's teaching. And so to get rid of Paul in his writings, they say all kind of bad things to say he's not really an apostle, that his his passages and his scriptures and everything related to him should be removed from the book because he's not an, a valid apostle. OK, he's antichrist. He's anti he because he came against Jesus. Jesus taught the law and he said to walk in the spirit and you're not under the law. And so they take that to say, OK, this guy is contradicting Jesus. And what we will find out later is they don't understand scriptures. They're not walking in the spirit to understand what Paul is saying, because the Bible says that, you know, Peter said that some of the things that Paul is teaching is hard to understand. And he tells you why. All right. But let me just deal with a few things first. First thing they say is Paul didn't see Jesus. Therefore, he's not an apostle. The criteria for being an apostle was that you had to have seen Jesus been in his fellowship when he was on earth. And we know that's not true. I did a whole sermon on apostleship. There were apostles after Jesus died and rose again, who were not a part of the fellowship with the original 12. There were apostles being tried as the book of Revelation talks about. And it's, the, it's John, I believe, talking. And he's stating that how, how one church in particular was trying apostles and to see that and found out that they weren't. So why are you trying apostles if, if it's only 12? You can only be the original 12. You so, and I talked about this before. So the bottom line is that Paul not being in the company of Jesus does not invalidate him as an apostle. Okay. He's seen Jesus on the road to Damascus and you see the fruit of his ministry. All right. Another thing they say is Paul contradicted Jesus by dropping the law. Now, that's not true. If you read scriptures and what he's specifically saying is that the law was given to show you your weakness and you need the Holy Spirit to actually to please God. And the law is fulfilled in love, which is an attribute from the Holy Spirit. We talked about that in the last sermon. So that's not what he's saying. OK, he's not tearing the law down and getting rid of the law. He's just not doing that. Lying is still wrong. The Bible says in Revelations, all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. So the, the, the commandment to thou shall not bear witness or thou, thou shall not lie is still valid. OK, he didn't tear that down. He didn't get rid of that. He didn't contradict Jesus. All right. Um, there's other claims they make. Well, Paul fell out with Barnabas. What was that about? And uh, the Jews tried to kill Paul. And what is that about? See, he's a false prophet and nobody wants him around. And, and, and so this is, you know, he's a false apostle and all, all that kind of, it's foolishness. It's, it's straight foolishness. The reason is, is that what Paul taught, a lot of people don't like. They don't like it because once again, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, they don't want to yield to the Holy Spirit. They're proud. They want to follow God in their own flesh. They don't want to connect to God the way God has created us to be connected to him. That's through a, a, a need. We are not on our own. We are extensions of God. The Bible says in John chapter 15, verses five, Jesus is, the, is divine. We are the branches. Without him, we can do nothing. We are extensions of, of God. If we disconnect and try to do our own thing in our own flesh, in our own power, we fail. And God is saying that's why Israel failed under the law. That's why everybody else is a hot mess, because they don't have this Holy Spirit empowering them, connecting them to God, keeping them in right standing with God. So this idea of yielding to the spirit is is it angers the proud because they, they have to admit that they're weak. They have to submit to God and say, OK, man, I, I can't do this without your power. I don't want to. And that's what they're saying. I don't want to submit to God. I don't need God like that. Bible says in Ephesians chapter two, verses eight, that we are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Nobody's getting into heaven saying that they got there on their own. We were saved by grace through faith, not of works, 
lest any man should boast. Now we were created to do good works as the, as the passage continues, but the bottom line is here, we were saved by grace through faith. We believe God, his grace saved us. All right. It's not about, about us. We can't say to God, I got in, I can please you, I can do everything. Because that's why Jesus died. If we could please God without the blood of Jesus and without the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't need Jesus' death on the cross. We wouldn't need the Holy Spirit to empower us. When Jesus talked to the Pharisee who came to him at night, he's like, man, don't you know you need to be born again? You need to be born again. You need the Holy Spirit. You need to be born of the Spirit and then get filled with the Spirit. He's telling them this because this is what's necessary. And yet the people who are stubborn, who don't want to follow God and obey him, they rather keep the law in their own flesh. They don't want to have a problem with Paul's writing. So that's what was what's going on here. OK, and I'm not going to go over this again. It's real stupid when I hear people saying this, you know, Paul's the Antichrist. And all this kind of foolishness. But those are the reasons. But let me show you in scripture how Peter validated Paul as a true apostle. All right. Because see, ain't nobody got a problem with Peter's writings. But you got a problem with Paul. Well, well guess what? Peter is validating Paul as an apostle. And then finally, we're going to end off as, as to why people can't understand Paul's writings. All right. So let's go to Second Peter chapter 3, verses 15. It says, this is obviously Peter talking. And remember, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. This is from the New Living Translation. This is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. So he's acknowledging that God gave him wisdom and that he wrote to him, to the people. Speaking, in, in other words, he's saying the same thing Peter is saying. See, he's saying, this is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. All right. So he's also saying that he's a beloved brother. All right. So he ain't had no problem with Paul. Paul is just another apostle under God, just like he is. All right. Now, if he was a false apostle, he would have said so. But he did. not It goes on in verse 16. Speaking of these things in all of his letters. All right. Some of his comments are hard to understand. And those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different, just as they do with other parts of scripture. Now, I want to just grab on to the part where he says, just as they do with other parts of scripture. He's connecting his letters to scripture. All right. So he's saying his letters are scripture as well. All right. Let me read it all in again. Okay. This is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. Speaking of these things in all of his letters, some of his comments are hard to understand. And those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different, just as they do with other parts of scripture. And this will result in their destruction. So Paul is under the inspiration of God, the Holy Spirit. And. What he said in those letters that we're reading, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, all the stuff that we're reading from Paul, that's from God. And that's considered scripture, just like the Old Testament, the prophets and the law, all of that. All right. It's all scripture. It's inspired by God. It's part of the Bible. Now, he goes in to show you why you can't understand Paul's writings. Some of his comments are hard to understand. And those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different. There it is right there. They're ignorant and they're unstable. And so they'll twist what he's saying. Now I've seen black like Hebrew Israelites, these united in Christ or other camp leaders, or if you try to tell them, Hey, you know, Paul said, we need to keep walking in the spirit and, you know, and then we'll fulfill the law. They'll turn around and say, you can't understand Paul's writings and they'll pull up second Peter. And then they'll try to tell you it's about keeping the law and, you know, the something, spirit of something else and ain't got nothing to do with that. And you need to stay up under the law in your flesh. You don't need no help from the Holy Ghost, you know, stuff like that. And what they're doing here is they're ignorant and they're unstable. And so they end up twisting uh, his letters to mean something different. But like we we're talking about, the, the topic is 
people are saying that Paul is an antichrist, that he's not a real apostle. The reason why they're doing this is because they don't understand um, his, his writings and they're, they're ignorant. And they simply don't want to follow God the way he has uh, revealed to his people. Okay, we're in a new covenant. New things were revealed to us and how to please God. And that's through the Holy Spirit. And they don't want to do that. So they're deceived and they don't want to follow God. And so they're going to hate on Paul and say he's not a valid apostle. And then those who say he's a valid apostle, they'll twist what he says to get you to believe something else, to throw you off track. OK, now let me keep going here, because this is what you tell somebody who tells you you can't understand Paul's writings because we can understand everything if we if we born again. This is a, a passage in First Corinthians 2, 14. This is from New Living Translation. It says people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's spirit. It all sounds foolish to them. And they can't understand it for only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit means. So if you're born again and some knucklehead come and tell you, you can't understand Paul's writing. You say, yes, I can. I'm in the spirit. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. How are you going to tell me? I can't understand it. How are you going to tell me? I can't understand the word of God, especially something he wants me to understand. I'll understand it because he's going to give me understanding. All right. That's all you got to tell a person. There's another passage where it says the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. This is Jesus speaking, I believe. This is in John chapter 16, verses 13. It says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. All right, that's from the New Living Translation. Here's from the King James. How be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. All right. So we have that same promise. We, we have the Holy Spirit and he gives us understanding of the future. He also gives us the truth and he guides us into all truth. And so if you're a person who loves the truth, God, the Holy Spirit is going to guide you into more and more truth. You don't understand passages of scripture. He'll give you the correct understanding of those scriptures. So that's what you tell somebody. Look, the Holy Spirit guides me in all truth. You know, spiritual people can only understand the things of God. Uh, fleshy people can't. It sounds like foolishness to them. So I, I believe a lot of these so-called preachers who who are writing books called Apostle Paul the Antichrist, they, 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 they're, they're not born again. They're foolish. And as we mentioned earlier, they're ignorant and they're in unstable. That's what's going on there. They're ignorant and unstable. So that's all I got for you. Uh, walk in the spirit. That's what he's telling us to do. That's what we need. That's what we are lacking. But you got to humble yourself. The problem with these people is that they're not humble. They're arrogant and they're proud and they do not want to yield to God. They, they do not want to become that child. As Jesus said, they have to become a dependent person on God. They don't want to be dependent. They're so proud. I can do this. I don't need God. Look, the law was given to keep us in check. All right. We needed some kind of rules in place to keep us in check. You see what happened. We would follow him for a minute and we would fall, get back up, fall, get back up. So are you really following him? No, you just, you're getting by. Okay. And it's all these different reasons why, you know, they didn't teach their children properly. They had bad leaders. They got seduced by other nations. But the bottom line is internally, you have to say to yourself, OK, if God is going to put us in captivity for not following him. I don't want to go into captivity. I'm going to keep on following God. Yet you end up in captivity anyway. It's because you're not perfect. You're flawed. You have a nature that's against God that want to do the wrong thing. And so. You need to, number one, die, be washed clean in the blood of Jesus, and then be filled with the spirit in order to please God. The law is still good. We're going to continue to follow the law in the spirit of God, though. And the fulfillment of the law is in is wrapped up in one word, love, which is God himself. So you, when you got God in you, now you got the spirit in you. Now you got the law written on your heart, and now you're able to please God. Okay. So we're not trying to tell nobody, get rid of the law and the statutes and commandments of God. No, we're not saying that. 
OK, and I know y'all know we ain't saying that, but it's these these trolls who will come in and say, you know, Paul ain't ain't legitimate. You trying to tell people that that's just, you know, false accusations, really, at this point. You know, if I keep hearing people come at me like that, I'm going to just just block you because it's silly at this point. You know exactly what we're teaching and you got a problem with it because you you got a problem with God. And then at the end of the day. It's going to result in your destruction. So for all y'all who want to keep the law in your flesh, you're going to die and go to hell. That's that's basically what's going to happen to you. And then you're going to be thrown, thrown in the lake of fire. So I encourage you to confess your sins and repent and walk in the spirit. Get born again and walk in the spirit.